Hi guys and welcome back to another exciting episode. In this episode we're looking at ferns and in particular we're looking at the tree fern. The one behind me is a tree fern, it's a Cyathea. So we're going to look specifically, try and identify some of the two main types we've got here in New Zealand, which is the Cyatheas and the Dixonias. But before we do that, it's, I think it's important for us just to have a quick look at ferns themselves because they are so different to other plants that we've got, like the flowering plants. Ferns themselves don't actually flower, they produce spores. These spores burst and then they, the, the spores go off and they form this prothallus, which is like a little heart-shaped uh, organ, basically, structure. And in that structure you've got sperm cells and you've got an egg. And then the sperm cells have to swim across and fertilize the egg and then you'll get the new fern developing. So it's very different to our flowering plants. and, and in, in evolution, the ferns were before the flowering plants. So that's a little bit about how ferns reproduce. For them to do that, it all needs to be in a very moist and damp kind of um, environment. So that gives you a clue of how they should be grown. But before we talk about that, the, the cultural requirements, we'll just talk a little bit about the parts of the plant. So if you can sort of see here, there's uh, ferns have fronds, and the frond goes from the tip of the fern to the end of the stalk. The end of the stalk is basically called a stipe. Um, so that's the frond and then on the fronds you have the various uh, leaves and they can be the simple one singular leaf or they can be divided or even multiple divided on those on those fern leaves. And then the edge of those leaves can be the smooth or like a saw. So these are some of the ways that you look at when you're identifying uh, ferns. So the, the two we're going to have a look at, let's talk about them. The first one is the Cyathea, and the Cyathea is, belongs to the one that we call silver fern. So the silver fern is Cyathea delbata. Now silver ferns, you can get a clue in the name that the actual frond, when you turn it on the underside, is silver. And it's quite easy to distinguish that that's a silver fern. That's the first key. The second one is on, on the actual trunk of the silver fern, where those frond stalks go into the trunk, they tend to sort of stay in there and they form these little sort of bits of stalks that go down the trunk of the punga fern. So that's that's the second way. Um, now just talking about the heights and the widths of these, the, the Scythe delbata grows to around about sort of 10 meters or so, eight to 10 meters and the width can be anywhere between sort of uh, between about five to eight meters in width because each frond can be around about sort of two to three meters in width so you can sort of multiply that by uh, two to get the sort of the final girth of the plant now that's that's the two nice easy ways to identify silver ferns they have smaller thinner uh, fronds that come out they are silver underneath and they leave these stalk bits in the actual trunk of the fern. Now the other one is Cyathea, Cyathea medullaris, it's called the black punga and black punga meaning it's got a black trunk and thicker fronds that come out and they are black and thick and fleshy. Now uh, traditionally Maoris used to use those to peel back, cut those bits of fronds into sections, peel back the black skin, cook them up for quite a while and they would eat those. So that's a nice, easy way there. Um, the black punga fern is our tallest fern in New Zealand, and it forms, like I said, that black trunk. Now, when the fronds die down, they are more longer, and they sort of um, hang on it, and then they will fall off, giving a clean trunk. And then the scars that are left from those, those bits of um, fronds that die off is a sort of like a rounded hexagonal kind of shape. That's another clue. That's the two main types of Cyathea. There's a third one called the soft tree fern, which is Cyathea uh, smithii. And Cyathea smithii has, if you touch the leaf, it's very, very soft and um, could be used to sort of basically lie on. Now, um, that's produced, and it's, it's um, like I said, the, the black tree fern is, is the tallest fern, and the next one, smithii is around about the same sort of uh, about sort of between 8 to 10 meters and the black punga about 10 to 12 eventual height 
Now, um, growth rates, these are quite sort of, the black punga is the fastest growing uh, tree fern, and the other ones are sort of medium, but you have to sort of wait, uh, wait a bit of time to grow. They're not going to be super fast. Now, if we flip those ones to the side for a minute, and then we'll pull in the other main group of tree ferns in New Zealand. It's called the Dixonias. Now, the Dixonias, named after a botanist, 18th century botanist, and you've got basically two main New Zealand types. So you've got, first, let's have a look at the Dixonia fibrosa. Fibrosa, if you look at the name fibrosa, it sounds like fibers, and that's referring to the fibrous roots, aerial roots that surround its trunk. And if you look at fibrosa, it's got quite a thick trunk, very, very dense. Maras used to use them to protect their food stores against rats because they were very hard to sort of, the rats were had to sort of like try and eat the way through. So there's are aerial roots, fibrous roots. Now, the other identifying factor for uh, Dix, uh, Dixonia fibrosa is at the top, the fronds, the fronds will form a really thick, dense skirt around the trunk. The Dixonias are smaller ferns in width, so you can sort of think around about between sort of around about four meters to five meters in width. Smaller overall girth, slower fibrosis, very, very slow growing, and hence they can be quite expensive to buy. The other one, next one over, is Dixonia sclerosa. Now that's a thinner, thinner trunk, the sort of darker uh, trunk, and it's got um, the little stipes the, those stems that we were talking about with the silver fern they are there but they're more compact and so that is, is different so you can see the difference there they uh, not not out like the silver fern now there's an australian uh, uh, version of this one called dixonia antarctica and that's a very popular uh, uh, tree fern too like i said these are these are smaller ferns they don't grow as tall around about the sort of uh, anywhere between sort of six to to say seven meters and around about that sort of four to six meters in, in, in width. So very good plants to use in the garden. They do like a protected site. So they, if you're going to plant them, plant them on a, in a, in a gully or on the cooler side. So if you're in the, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, like we are, it's, you put them on the South side. If you're in the Northern hemisphere, you put them on a bit of a Northern side where they don't get that full hot sun, which dries them out. This whole point of like the fronds dropping down and staying by the trunk it's all to help keep that trunk nice and sort of moist and protect it from the harsh sun of course little ferns they they love it in that sort of in those areas where it's protected from the wind and harsh conditions growing under trees now if you're going to use tree ferns underneath them you can plant lots of other other uh, useful plants like clivias and rangaranga lilies uh, liriopes all those sort of plants that will do okay, hydrangeas, you know, doesn't they all kind of like that sort of filtered light? Okay, guys, we're going to leave it there. So this was on pungas and tree ferns. Hopefully you found it useful and we'll see you in the next video.